Are you ready to repurpose, upcycle, and flip some thrifts today? And let's not forget, it's going to be in rustic, primitive decor. Oh, this is the video for you. These are going to be so fun and so awesome. You're going to love it. To do a twofer on this one, it's going to be an upcycle and a repurpose. So I'm going to take this piece of barn wood, I guess is what it is, and this uh, collage paper that I got from Ideologic ideology i can say that <laughs> from tim holtz and it's called aviary and i'll put a link down in the description because you're gonna want this paper it's beautiful if you love springtime birds on branches it's just gorgeous so uh, it's just the perfect size to go on this board that's uh, on hooked to the board so uh, what I'm going to do is tape it off so that I don't get any paint or anything on the um, the barnwood bo board itself because um, I want it to stay exactly the way it is. I love the, the uh, rustic look of it, so we're going to keep it that way. I'm going to take some of my Oops paint that I got from Lowe's. I think it was like $2, and it's a, just a... Uh, off white color and I'm just going to cover over the picture that was originally on the board. It took two coats. I wanted to make sure it was good and covered and it wouldn't come through at all. Finding where I want my picture to be, what part of the paper I want in the middle of my picture and I'm going to save this piece that I'm setting aside because I will be using it uh, the rest of it on something else. So I'm just going to take a thin coat of Mod Podge and put that over the top of my little board here that I painted. And we're going to cover it all over. Sometimes I do sections at a time, but this one it's small enough so I can just do the whole thing. And I'm just going to slowly add it to uh, the board and then get it so as much of the wrinkling as I can out of it. I don't mind if there's a little bit, but I find, I'm finding that using the uh, plastic wrap over the top of it and my little roller is working perfectly for this. It really takes out a lot of the wrinkles and makes it nice and flat and you know that you have it on there really well. And then I just make sure I go over the edges and that kind of helps um, crease it so when you go to sand it off like right here, it comes off pretty easily. This kind of glued down to the tape, so as long as I got it disconnected from the board, when I pull the tape off, it should all come off. Now I'm also gonna take my Tim Holtz spray. It's a distressing uh, spray stain that I'm going to put on. I think it's the antique one. And I'm just lightly spraying that. I kind of pull it away and spray. And then I'm going to go back with a paper towel and just kind of blot it and have it just do certain spots darker than others. Then I sprayed a little bit onto a paper towel and I'm just going over the edges to make them a little bit darker than the rest of it and uh, just to highlight it some. And then once that's dry, I'm going to take some Mod Podge and go over it and seal it in. I wanted something nice to hang with or hang the picture from. So I had this uh, string of beads I got from Dollar Tree. It has the uh, rainbow on one end and a tassel on the other end. And I thought if I could cut it and then remove a few beads on one end, I should be able to attach that to the back, which is what I did here. And it worked really well. If you see up in the right hand corner there, I did uh, take the other half and paint those green over the black and then distressed it back. But I didn't like that green color with my picture, so I just decided to go with the black. I will use those on something else. It was just the wrong color green. So I drilled a hole down in the bottom because while I was at Dollar Tree, and finding the beads, I found a couple of these knobs, these little uh, crystal looking knobs. 
and I decided I was going to use that on the bottom of my frame. I got two of them. That was the only two left. I've never seen them there before, so I was really excited. So there we go. All done. I think it came out so cute. What do you think? I went thrifting with my daughter recently and as soon as we walked in the door of this place that we just found, we uh, my daughter found this mirrored candle holder and was like, mom, look at this. And I was like, perfect, I want it. And so I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it as soon as I saw it and the paper from Ideology, the Tim Holtz collage paper. So I decided I was going to um, take that and put it in the mirrored part. So I'm going to have to take it all apart and clean it up and then uh, give it a paint job. So I am going to start with a base of black. This is just going to be the base coat. We're going to put something over this and you're going to love it. So uh, we're going to do the um, folk art paint and this is the moss color in folk art. And I'm going to show you the difference between that and the Waverly Moss paint, which is what I used before on the beads. And I was not happy with the color that it just didn't go with that uh, aviary paper. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Moss paint on this. I think this is going to look so cool. And I'm so excited to see how it comes out. I know it's a little bit of a striking color, but trust me, it's going to look really awesome. Mm -hmm. Now I kind of messed up here. I was going to use my Vaseline over the black paint and make a resist for this green paint and I forgot. I forgot the step. I was so excited to use the moss paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my uh, my hair my hair dryer, my heat gun, and uh, go really close to the paint and make it bubble so that I can get it to chip and flake off when I sand it. So I did two coats of the green paint, and I let it dry. And now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, well before I let it dry, I did hit it with the dryer to get those bubbles, and then uh, I let it dry the rest of the way just for a few hours and now I'm going back through with my sandpaper and scuffing it up in spots where I want it to scuff up on the sides, on the edges, uh, anywhere where there is a, uh, a line that I want it to distress and I just think I just love this distressing technique because it does take a lot off but it looks really cool I think it just gives it a lot of character and a lot of age, I think, uh, to the piece. So I love how that comes out. So then I'm going to take some antique wax and I'm gonna straight from the bottle and I'm going to uh, put it right on the candle holder and then wipe it back. And so it just is going to, this is gonna darken up the green paint just a little bit, make it look a little bit aged with the brown it's gonna sit down in any of the crevices that I can't get it out of and make it just look like it's been around for a while. And it's also gonna seal the piece. So now I'm taking the mirror that was in the candle holder. I painted it the off-white color with my Oops paint. And now I'm, I let it dry. And now I am taking a coat of Mod Podge and putting it a thin coat over the top of that mirror or the painted surface on that mirror. Now I took this scrap piece that I had, I don't wanna waste it, and I really like these two little birds sitting on the branch. So we're gonna use that on this painted surface. And it doesn't quite reach all the way to the top and the bottom, but that's okay. I'm gonna make sure this 
is down, sealed, and as many of the wrinkles taken out of it as possible. And then I'll just go back and take a piece of the uh, paper that is just scrap and I will put those on the top and bottom. I don't think you'll be able to see it because it is a rounded uh, frame that that mirror goes into, but I still want it to be completely covered just in case it, it would show. So I just cut a piece off there for the top and the bottom and just reapplied some Mod Podge and put it right over the top and it worked out just fine. Any excess paper that I have left over, I want to uh, sand off. So I'm sanding the edges to get that extra paper off and it just peels off once you get it disconnected from the piece that you want to keep. So then I'm going to take my uh, stain spray, my distressing spray that I have from Tim Holtz. Again, down in the description, I will have uh, a link to purchase that if you're interested. It's really some pretty cool stuff and I think when I'm done with it I will make my own distressing uh, spray stain and I will put it in my, in, I'll reuse the spray bottle and that way I'll always have some because this is really working out well. So I just did some sprays and then blotted it off so that it would have just spots here and there and then I'm just taking it on a paper towel and going around the edges to give it a little bit more yellowing and then I'm just going to give it a coat of this Mod Podge to seal it in and make sure that it stays down and it makes it easier to clean also. I decided I wanted to grubby a candle, but I've seen a different technique recently and I wanted to try it. My problem was I didn't have any wax paper. This is parchment paper. So I'm gonna try it with this. I have a vanilla pillar candle from Dollar Tree and I unwrapped it. I have some grubby mix and a piece of my parchment paper. Now I'm just gonna put the grubby mix down on top of the paper and then I'm going to roll the candle into the grubby mix with the parchment paper. So I'm just gonna roll it all up together. I go to a certain point and then I'm gonna stop and I got my heat gun there. And what I'm going to do is heat up the candle through this parchment paper with the grubby mix over the top of it. What it's supposed to do is melt the wax so that it grabs onto the grubby mix and it sticks to it. So, and I'm not going to seal it. So any of you that are interested in getting, doing some of these candles, but you want that smell of the grubby mix, it's that awesome cloves and cinnamon and, and uh, pumpkin spice and all those yummy smells to come through, this might be something that you wanna try instead of sealing it with Mod Podge. This might be an interesting way to um, get that smell, but still get a grubby candle look. Now it doesn't completely uh, cover the candle, which I'm fine with, I don't mind it. It looks just kind of just like a distressed candle. And so I thought it looked kind of cool and it, it actually kind of worked. So what I did was I heated it up with the heat gun, I pressed down on it with my hand, and I found that when I unrolled it, I had some clumps here and there. So I just used a paintbrush and just kind of brushed them off just a little bit so that uh, it would stick a little bit better. And then I reapplied, I dumped out the excess and I hit it with the heat gun again and I put some on the top and I'm gonna do it again because I brushed off too much there. And I just set the, the parchment paper on top, which again, I think you're supposed to use wax paper, but uh, I didn't have any. So this is all, and I just, just um, you know, running the heat gun over the top of that so that it will heat up your candle, melt a little bit, and it just accepts that that spice mixture. And it's pretty cool. Um, I really like how it came out. See what you think.
I'll have a link down in the description on how I make my grubby spice mixture so that you can try it as well. I found a bunch of these items in my stash and I decided I wanted to try and put them together. Uh, I had this little wooden uh, Lazy Susan, it spins around, and I had this glass, um, I guess it's like a light shade, and I've had this for a long time and I just wanted to put a topper on it and I just couldn't find the right thing. And while I was at the flea market the other day, um, I found some bird salt and pepper shakers and I just love them. So I decided I wanted to put one on top of this globe. So I found this little tiny round piece of wood that fit exactly on the top of the glass. And what I'm gonna do is take one of these birds and glue it to the top. But I want to paint them first so the top and the bottom all are cohesive and they look like they're supposed to be together. So to cover up the little holes in my little salt shaker, I'm going to take a little bit of clay and fill in the holes so that you can't see them, so that the paint doesn't fall in. Probably the paint would stick down in there and cover those holes up, but I thought I would just uh, give it a little help and put some clay in there. So I set that aside to dry and I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat of black paint on everything. This is just a base coat so that I will have something underneath the second coat of paint that I put on. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Vaseline and put it over the top of my black coat. I coated everything with black, the bird, the little round piece, and the little Lazy Susan. Uh, the only thing that is not going to get painted is the glass globe. So I just put a little bit of Vaseline on there to resist the paint that I'm putting on. And this is the folk art paint in the color of moss. So I am using this paint and I'm going to put two coats over the top of uh, all three of these pieces. Once they're dry, I'm gonna go back with a rag and wipe it back. And wherever I put the Vaseline, it is going to resist the paint and pull that off and go down to the black. This is a great distressing technique if you don't want to use sandpaper and go down to your original color. So I really wanted that to work with the bird because I didn't want it to come down through uh, all the way through to that light blue that it was before. Even though it was cute, it doesn't match uh, what I want to do here. So I'm just taking a coat of antique wax and I'm going to seal it in and make it look a little bit aged, darken up that green paint just a little bit. And I did that for all three pieces, the bird, the, the little round piece it's gonna sit on. And this is the round piece, so I'm using E6000 and some hot glue. The E6000 is a permanent glue, so it should hold that on there permanently. The uh, hot glue is just a, an immediate hold so that I can get all my pieces together and have it stay stuck down uh, temporarily until the E6000 uh, kicks in and dries and sticks permanent. Doing the same thing with the bird, doing E6000 and then a little bit of hot glue and that's going over the on the top of that little round piece on the top of my globe. This piece came out so cute, I just love it. So I'm gonna take a piece of the Ideology Tim Holtz collage paper. I'm just loving this paper right now. It's very springy and I could use that with all the storms that we've been getting recently. The snow is piling up and it's a lot of work, so. I'm having fun with these really fun springy uh, looks that I can do. 
So I'm just gonna glue this piece of paper down onto a, a wooden tag that I have. I didn't bother painting it because it was already a light color and I knew it would be fine. And I'm just taking a piece of scrap and going over the top to fill it in the rest of the way. And then I'm gonna take some twine and run it through my little tag. I did distress the tag just a little bit with some black paint um, just to give it a, some age. Such a fun project and it does show a good way to take pieces that wouldn't normally go together and just marry them together. This is a quick, simple project, but I didn't want to leave it out because it is another marriage and it just looks so great. I found this cool, I don't even know if it's a lid, if it's a, a light shade, I'm not really sure, but it's just a like a wicker basket and it has a hole in the bottom or the top, depending on how you want to use it. And I decided that I wanted to use it on this candlestick, this glass candlestick that I had and make a cool riser out of it. And then I could put in some greenery and use it in some of my uh, vignettes that I have and show you some different ways you can use it. So I'm just gonna use E6000 and some hot glue and secure this basket upside down, I guess, because I don't really know how you're supposed to use it, but um, to the candlestick and we're gonna just stick it down there, and once it's stuck, we will decorate with it and put some greenery and maybe a doily in there. And I think it's gonna look really cool in one of my vignettes. I hope you enjoyed my projects today. Let me know down in the comments if you have a favorite. I don't even know if I could pick one because I think they're all great. So thanks guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.